I'll jump in here for a bit, if that's okay. Please do. Please do. I, I have this 10-year plan that I'm working on. Since I started getting into IoT, I've got an RV travel trailer. So some of my, my ongoing project that's been going for eight of those 10 years now <laughs> is an automation type system for the trailer. And what I want to do basically is monitor the standard temperature, humidity, but also tank levels, uh, water leaks, etc. But what I don't want to do, I don't want to have 10, 12 separate LoRa uh, sensors in that trailer. I just want one. Okay. So what I found prior to diving into the LoRa WAN world here was a uh, framework called My Sensors, MySensors.org. They use uh, 2.4 gigahertz radios, the NRF 2401, a couple of others, and also incidentally NRF 51822s, BLE uh, modules. So what I've done is I've married that network, that's my sensors.org meshing network to the uh, WizBlock. So the sensors that are part of the mesh are using the BLE frequency, but not the stack. They're not using the BLE stack, they just, they're using the frequency to communicate among themselves and the WizBlock because the WizBlock, as Travis said, supports BLE, it supports that frequency. So I've married the two together to now where I can have several sensors communicating across that mysensor.org framework, feeding into the WizBlock. The WizBlock then forwards that on via the LoRaWAN onto the cloud. At least that's the long-term plan. So what I've been messing with here lately is WizBlock, turns out, is uh, its underlying uh, operating system, if you will, is using RTOS, which kind of surprised me when I first looked at it. It's not a bare metal, it's an RTOS. And I've always kind of had that on the, on the back of my mind, I wanna learn RTOS, you know, new and shiny things. So I've been playing around with that aspect as well, putting the LoRa uh, code in one task and having the meshing network code in a separate task and trying to get all that to work together. So it's been an interesting exploration of RTOS and now trying to debug RTOS tasks all within Platformio. So it Very kind cool. of proves out what uh, Travis was saying about BLE and uh, LoRaWAN coexisting within the WizBlock, at least so far least so far. No, that's very cool. And um, if you will, just for the benefit of, um, you know, some folks that don't know what you're referring to when you say RTOS. It's a real-time operating system, sort of, kind of. It runs on these microcontrollers. Um, it's basically gives you task switching and memory management to a certain degree. It's not a full-blown operating system. But as I understand it, and I'm kind of a newbie here, it's kind of designed to where you can break your application up into several pieces, but not have to get as concerned about the standard forever loop. There is no forever loop within your application code here. Well, there kind of is. You create a task, that task runs a subset of your code. In my case, I've got, I'm communicating with my, uh, my sensors.org meshing framework. All of that is done within a single task. I have another task that does all of the LoRa initialization, LoRaWAN initialization and communication. So those two tasks are separate. The RTOS will schedule those to run periodically. Um, there are different scheduling algorithms that you can set up. Mine is just, I don't know, it's just basic round robin, I believe. But the tasks can have different priorities. So if my one task needs to run more often than my other task, I can set the priority so it has higher priority. If my higher priority task needs to run, it will automatically 
uh, task switch, switch from the task that's running and run my high priority task. I don't have to, as in the, uh, the single loop programming, I don't have to wait for that task to complete. It'll interrupt, stop, run my high priority task, run that to completion, pick back up the previous task where it left off and run again. So it's kind of, it's a preemptive it's a, uh, operating system, not as robust as Linux or Windows, for instance. But everything isn't blocking, um, you know, everything else that you're wanting to run. So you'll have, you know, just a, a long list of blocking operations uh, waiting for something to complete. Right, you, right, you can. And you can set up communication queues between your tasks. If you've got, I've got a messages I need to pass from one task to another. Well, I can use the RTOS queues to do that. I don't have to roll my own circular buffer, for instance, to handle that communication. And there's mutexes and semaphores to where you can block a task until this other task does something and sets a semaphore, which then kicks off the blocking tasks. So it has some pretty, some pretty powerful features to it. Very cool. And those other radios that you're using are, I mean, they're great. They're A, they're very, very cheap. Right. Um, uh, B, they're, they're relatively simple to, to integrate into a sensor. And so, you know, having, you know, just a handful or, you know, a ton of those around, you know, talking through, I guess, one kind of protocol translator, you know, that, that backhauls everything, you know, off of Laura. No, that, that, that's right. great, man. Um, I'm excited to check that out. Very cool. I did try to spin this up with the IoT for good contest using the STM board pretty much the same way, except that board didn't support the BLE uh, frequency. So I had to communicate between the two over, over serial ports. And that became a nightmare, trying to uh, match the uh, speeds of the two different boards and just keeping all of the data consistent ended up being a nightmare. So, and if anyone anyway. wants to uh, see the nightmare uh, that he's referring to, I'm going <laughs> to, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to link your project from the IoT fine. for Good uh, contest down here, and please take please check this out. Uh, I mean, it, this is a very very cool project, um, and uh, uh, it's very detailed, and uh, as you can see, and so if, you, if this is something you're interested in, which you should be, um, ma make sure to do a read through of this, uh, and, and you know, thank you for that submission, Leroy. That was. Uh, um, a couple more weeks, I probably would have had it going, but I just ran out of time. And, you know, I mean, when, when submissions are judged and it's, I mean, it's everyone, like you say, everyone can't win. Um, and yeah. I, I, there were some very cool projects. Um, and I think all of those should be linked through on our docs page under community projects. And so if you're looking for some ideas or, you know, some things that other people have implemented on the Helium network, um, go and take a look at those. Um, you know, I think everything in there has a link to a GitHub repo uh, so you can you can look through the source code and see exactly how it was implemented. Um, it's there, there's some some very cool projects. So, yep, there is. Well, I can't wait to check this one out, Leroy. Uh, I'm excited. This uh, it sounds it sounds really neat and something that could probably be used. You know, I mean, obviously outside of just you know an RV. I mean, any anything you're wanting to sense or any environment you're wanting to sense. That's cool, man. Right. Yeah, but the problem is I'm on like uh, year eight of the project, so. I'm slow. <laughs> well, well, but see, but for newcomers, they, they take advantage. They can reap the. <laughs> yeah. If anybody's interested. All, all of your hard work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. Very cool. Uh, 